When Amazon Prime inexplicably banned Hoaxed, a documentary about fake news by journalist Mike Cernovich, Hoaxed blasted off in popularity, becoming the top-selling documentary in the world across all platforms and reaching third on the Associated Press Independent Film Bestseller list. In this video, we're going to look at three mind-shagging strategies the corporate press uses to manufacture fake news. Cernovich explores these and other examples of fake news in the movie and also in his companion book by the same name. I suggest you grab your copy of Hoaxed on Amazon, the book, and stream the movie on iTunes before they come for it. Rather than just say, hey, good movie, go watch it. I'm taking a different angle with this video. The same way I reviewed Loser Think, the New York Times bestseller by Dilbert creator Scott Adams, and Don't Burn This Book by Rubin Report host Dave Rubin. We're going to draw powerful lessons from Hoaxed that you as an aspiring author can use to write better, fact check proof your book, and get your message to stick in readers' minds long after they've turned the last page. That's where Hoaxed comes in. Let's look at the three types of fake news that media on both sides push so you as a person of integrity can use these insights to write a powerfully persuasive book that positively impacts the planet. Because in the words of Mike Cernovich, it's not okay to spread fake news. In Hoaxed, Cernovich dismantles a type of fake news called wikiality. This is simply changing the facts to fit the story you want to push in the same way that any old anon can go into Wikipedia and edit reality. And they say you can't change the past. Wikiality gets personal for Cernovich because his Wikipedia page has been locked for editing. What's there now says little to nothing about his accomplishments as a journalist, exposing corruption of the highest levels of government. As a result, the mic you read about on Wikipedia doesn't actually exist. So what does Wikiality have to do with authors like you? So often in the publishing industry, I meet aspiring authors who come to a conclusion and then ask their ghostwriter or editor to carefully curate only evidence that backs up their claim. Essentially, inventing their own little version of reality. Nothing wrong with backing up what you write, obviously. But here's the issue. It's not persuasive. When you push one side of an argument or an idea, yours, you just lose people because it's obvious that's what you're doing. Let's do better. I recommend you take challenges and objections to your book seriously. Tackle them head on to build up your own credibility. In some books I ghostwrite, we actually include a frequently asked questions section in the opening chapter, or we dedicate an entire chapter to busting myths about the author's expertise. When you do this, you show your readers you're arguing in good faith, something fake news pushers are not. Another type of fake news hoaxed shatters is what Cernovich calls hacked like Joy Reid. MSNBC host Joy Reid made a different kind of headline for allegedly writing offensive homophobic articles on her blog several years ago. But it all went away when she claimed she'd been hacked. Yes, hacked. Those terribly inappropriate insults published on her blog under her name. Whoops, not I, said the journalist. Joy Reid took her denial so far as a claim without evidence that the FBI was investigating the hacking of her website. How did she get away with this? because fact checkers don't fact check their friends, as Cernovich says. Scott Adams has a useful little principle that applies here. In a complex situation where there's a huge upside to lying or just taking advantage of people, little chance of getting caught, almost 100% of the time, people lie. The lesson authors can draw from hack like Joy Reid fake news is that we need to fact check our own manuscripts, not rely on an editor, agent, or publishing editor to do it for us. And if for any reason it turns out you're wrong about something, own it. It's the right thing to do. Don't claim someone hacked you, like Joy Reid. A third form of fake news hoaxed torpedoes is called the credibly accused frame. Journalists use this technique when they want the public to feel a certain way about a story before presenting the facts. It's classic persuasion, the Robert Cialdini term for getting people to agree with your message before it's been sent. Pretty clever. Think about the credibly accused Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh here in the United States, or the credibly accused former Vice President Joe Biden, who's been grappling with Me Too accusations. What does credibly accused do? It persuades you to assume they're probably guilty before you know anything about the accuser, the event, or the accused's response. The story is framed and the conclusion all but settled. Facts are an afterthought. So what's the application for authors? 
The corporate press uses the credibly accused persuasion cheat code to defend the version of the story they've decided is true. But you can use this trick for good, even if you're writing about health, personal development, or business instead of news. You can set up how you want readers to think, feel, and act on what you're about to say in your book before you say it. Let me give you an example of effective persuasion from one of my client's books. Mass Persuasion Method by Bushra Azar was ranked by book authority voters, including Warren Buffett, Tim Ferriss, and Jim Collins, as the number three best persuasion book of all time. The reason this book works so well to convert readers into paying customers for the author is that people make it all the way through the book. We got her audience of super busy entrepreneurs to actually finish the book with this killer example of persuasion. Quote, this little book is written with you in mind, or more specifically, that unspoken, do not waste my time or I will cut you, policy most of us wish we could implement. That's why I kept this book as short as I could. The content is laid out so it's all easy to read. If you're used to reading business books that go on and on and take 847 pages to get to the point, you read these lines by Bushra and think, whoa, this lady respects my time, so I'm going to respect hers and finish the whole damn book. How can you use your new knowledge of these three forms of fake news to pull readers into your book, back up your claims, persuade them to adopt your ideas, and propel them to take massive, decisive action? Let me know in the comments below. Then check out my interview with Bushra Azar, where we go behind the scenes and talk about how we drafted Mass Persuasion Method to become the acclaimed book it is today. And of course, grab your copy of Hoaxed by Mike Cernovich on Amazon.com and stream the movie on iTunes or Vimeo. Links in the comments below. I'll see you next time.